Dystonic Forms Virtual Exhibition, supported by Arts Council England. My name is Carol Thorpe Gonner and I have dystonia, an unusual and unexplained neurological condition which affects 70,000 plus people in Britain alone. Dystonia manifests itself in several debilitating physical and psychological ways and can be treated to a lesser or greater degree using medication Botox for spasm in muscles and deep brain stimulation. I have had the latter and this has helped me quite a lot. As an artist, teacher and dystonic person, I evolved this project in an attempt to creatively unify others with the condition or with similar movement disorders, Parkinson's and MS for example. Covid-19 prevented the tour of this exhibition to heritage centres, libraries, neurological hospitals, universities and to La Havre University in France in particular. So we are presenting this to you now as a virtual one. Dystonia, like COVID-19, is a worldwide condition. Paramount to its success was finding and using lightweight materials which could be built into sculptures and transferred without distressing the makers. Ten workshops in two venues and of a two-hour duration took place early in 2020. Dystonia often worsens with activity and tiredness, balance, stiffening of muscles, shaking and fuzzy-headedness are symptoms that I really didn't want to exasperate, so a limited work span time was important. Collaboration, discussion and experimentation were ongoing regarding how best we might construct sculptures that imparted our dystonic experience to others. This collaboration has been a joyous one, out of which images and sculptures have emerged and an energy and desire to express personal and shared experiences gave each gathering a dynamism which has manifested itself in the sculptures themselves. They are honest, raw, but well-considered pieces of art which provide the viewer with a little window into our often difficult dystonic world. I would like to thank all the marvellous makers who joined in so readily with this project. I hope that this might be just the start of a path which leads to positive, expressive creativity. And I would like to thank all those fabulous people at the St Martins and Rockwood Inn venues in Shropshire and to those who contributed with poems, words and images. Also to Anne-Marie Legram who was offered support throughout and to Flint's theatrical chandlers who provided many of the lightweight materials. Thank you. I'm personally indebted to Mrs Anwyn White and her team at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital Birmingham for enabling my own life to go forward in a much more positive way. She performed my deep brain stimulation operation some years ago and continues to support me. This piece is called Offering and the group worked together to make this out of Verifoam and it's a great substance to use but it can collapse with heat. You use heat to make the form but it's a quite a tricky one so the group did really really well. They wanted to make something that represented what the hospital can offer us, what what uh, the sciences can offer us as dystonic people, people with Parkinson's and MS. Uh, and so this piece represents that. So we've got a little bowl, which is also made of veriform, and some medication, clonazepam, uh, cocodamol, um, an example of Botox, because a lot of people have Botox uh, which prevents um, or helps prevent the muscle spasms being so strong. So this piece, I think, is a really, really strong piece. It's informative and it is called Offering. These two pieces are very simply made, but I felt as if this 
coil of wire really summed up the way that dystonia feels. It may be before dystonia has been diagnosed. And, um, sorry, my speech sometimes goes, that's part of the dystonia, so bear with me on that. It sometimes just goes, then it will return. So this is it's a strong, you know, a strong core, but trembly, trembly. And it could fall over. It could fall over at any moment. In fact, is it going to? Oh, she's managed to stand. That's great. But this is also a similar piece. This is made with the same coil of wire um, and it's called Caught on the Wire. And what I did was go around and collect lots and lots of little bits of wool that were caught on barbed wire in the, in the countryside and I've tied that on because quite often you feel caught up and you want to break free of the dystonia and you can't and it will, it will attach itself to you and attach itself to something else and prevent you from moving. So that's what this piece is about. It's, it's about being caught on the wire. And then, so this is a sculpture about blepospasm, which affects your eyes and also your, your face to some degree and can contort your face. And some people with blepospasm really have to, their eyes clamp shut. And it's also uh, about deep brain stimulation. And this little setup here is a sort of metaphor for the electronic circuit in the brain that goes wrong in dystonia. And we don't know why, but certainly deep brain stimulation has been of help, uh, and particularly to me, it has. And this next sculpture here is also about being tied up in this blepospasm state and it's um, got pins in your eyes because it just, I think eyes are just, if your eyes are irritated, that's just so horrible all the time. And so this sculpture is about blepospasm and about being in pain and also the facial muscles being tied up with the eyes and being pulled. This sculpture, again, is um, it's, uh, the metaphor for the brain circuit uh, is evident and um, with these wires and little contraptions in here and um, the brain operation, uh, deep brain stimulation, actually use electrodes that go in on either side of the head so holes are drilled into the head, go down and through to the basal ganglia, come out to uh, the chest region and I have a pacemaker, brain pacemaker, uh, and it's in the same situation as a, as a heart pacemaker and that enables me to move around and the circuit is somehow distracted by that. So that, that is about that. This very interesting piece is about paroxysmal dystonia. And paroxysmal dystonia is when the whole body is affected. And this piece really is trying to show, using the veriform, the way that the body just twists into unnatural poses. And in fact, Anu, who made this, this happens to her body, but in fact, her body goes right round and so it was not necessary to show the arms and legs coming right over but that's the sort of unnatural thing that her body does and I think she's made a good job in showing that and showing the way that the, the pain and the sections of her body really really hurt by doing this unnatural thing. So this is a piece that I've made which is um, really about distortion, the, the lopsidedness. This is a really nice, it's like, oh, when things are going well, you know, seaside, it's okay, things aren't too bad. And then we, we move around and there's a tiny little head on this big body because your body sometimes just feels so 
as if it needs to fall to the floor, that it has to be grounded. And there is a great weight, even if you're not big, you feel as if there's that weight. And so there's pain here and, and shock about the condition. And so let's move her round. And she's on this boat, she's, she's on this boat or this bath because she's wanting, she's wanting to sail away from it, but she can't. And there is this raw trapped person, trapped by dystonia, trapped by this physicality of the leaning body and the stretch and the, the twist of the head. And back around again. And there she is. A little bit like Suzanne and the Elders, I don't know if you know the painting, also of being watched. She feels as if she's being watched. She's doing this strange thing and she is somehow very aware of her own condition, either naked condition or dystonic condition. And this is a little bit similar in a way in that it's about this, you know, being a bit catatonic, just wanting to hide away and and sometimes, you know, some days we all have days that are better than others or worse than others and this isn't a good day for her. This piece is called Faulty Scene. Uh, I, I have a northern um, background uh, or my family were miners and it does have a piece of coal running through the middle there um, but the seam is faulty and uh, my seam is faulty because I have dystonia and I've tried to use brown wax and red wax to show the twist and the, the two figures locked in this seam of coal which is part of my my background and it's just something that's very strong within me as the dystonia is this piece is me trying to throw off dystonia and i've tried to use gravity um in a different way throwing throwing gra gravity and the feeling of being oppressed and in pressed into the ground and trying to alleviate and throw it up and this is how it would be it, it would feel to be joyous and throw off the the dystonic condition and so i've tried to do that by um using wax pieces and then she's been made into um a bronze and this you can get a really lovely effect of of throwing off um throwing off the weight of dystonia using that method this is quite a macabre little piece um poor old dolly she's got a hole in her head and she's had the lid of her skull taken off here and a little bit of brain coming out and uh, in fact, this doesn't happen with dystonia, but I just thought that um, this is how um, your, one might be frightened of deep, having deep brain stimulation. It's not like that. Um, so if somebody is considering uh, having that done, um, this is not what happens. But I just feel as though, you know, the wires and the little pieces here um, depict poor old Dolly with her with her brain in a bit of a to-do uh, and she's been sorted out hopefully and uh, next time we might see her she she might be up and running and not look at all like that <laughs> this piece is um, about how dystonia can affect your tongue and some people have this inability to communicate because their tongue affected. And it's just another difficulty in communicating and also hiding oneself away. So um, I just thought well, I'd make this little sculpture and put a plaster over it because this is, this is, this is how, how it would be 
to feel you is if you can't communicate and you hide yourself away and it's the worst thing in the world to have that and socially so embarrassing because you can't eat um, or drink or talk in front of other people so you become more and more isolated and you may not even join in the Dystonia Society or groups or, or anything else. So if we look at these pieces a lot of them are twisting, they're twisting figures, they're depicting trying to be strong, trying to straighten and it's all about support as well, people supporting one another. Dystonia is, uh, has a big dis dis supportive team, families, friends, the society, other people with dystonia. So these ones about support are important. Um, twisted, twisted figures. This one, uh, I was thinking a little bit of Icarus and um, falling down and coming down upside down we want to fly high and we can't always fly high particularly with dystonia and we have to work triple fold to to get anywhere at all but we have to try and um this poor old figure's been trying and she, she's fallen down but she hopefully will get up again and like the dolly we'll see her on a better day Thanks for watching the virtual tour of our Dystonic Forms exhibition. We hope you've learned more about dystonia and the power of art to express our experience of the condition. Please head to our Dystonic Forms Facebook page for more information. Thanks again to the Arts Council England for making this project possible.